Hi all, greetings from the apocalypse. So believe it or not, we're already in day five of chasing and repasse. And today I promise we're actually going to start chasing and repasse. But you know, it takes a surprising amount of time to show you all the steps. And I don't wanna just skip over things that might be helpful or confusing if we don't cover it. So um, hopefully it doesn't take too long to get to the moju. But so I've got my little leaves. Actually, mine are little beetles, but whatever they are. Uh, Soldered to my wires, Alexis has hers. So I'm gonna show you, and I'm gonna start off by showing you the tool I showed you yesterday, which is just a little scriber that I just kind of sanded the sharp point off a little bit so it's a little rounded at the end. And I'm gonna show you how I use this. I'll also probably use a couple dabs, so I'll show you how to use that as well. And also I'll show you Although a pitch bowl is a lovely thing, and if you're doing really complex projects, it can be helpful. For most of the simple stuff you're gonna do, we are going to use the lowly folded up paper towel. So here's my little beetle shape, and I'm gonna start by making a little row of dots right by the wire. I'm gonna use my homemade, handmade, little scriber that I've just sanded the edge down a little bit so that it won't poke all the way through. Now I could stick this down so that it's held in place, but usually something like this, I can usually just keep my finger over the ear wire and it won't really move around enough to cause a problem, so I don't bother but I could put it on double stick tape on something cushiony to hold it in position. So I'm just gonna line this up toward the top right next to the wire. Give it a little tap, slide it over. So you see how I'm just, I'm not trying to necessarily space them ultra perfectly. Um, I'm just putting them right next to the wire and moving them over a little bit and doing the next one. And you see a couple taps is really all it takes. So you see how I've just laid in that row. And like I said, I'm not trying to make them ultra super perfect, but I tried to put them more or less next to each other. And this is what it'll do on the other side. It's great, it makes like this little sort of spine thing. And any of the spaces that I feel like need to be filled in a little more, like right there maybe, I'll just flip it over now and put another mark in there. That's if you wanna go OCD style, you don't have to do that. You could just let it be, which is also a legitimate life choice. And maybe right here, I'll smack it again. See what I mean? I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, which is gonna kind of delineate my spine here. And you'll notice I'm using my lowly leather mallet 
and it works just fine. Something like this isn't really so hard just to hold in place with my fingers, which is why I didn't feel the need to put the sticky tape or use pitch or whatever. And if you're using your tool and you feel like you've polished it a little too much, like it's sliding around a little too much, all you would have to do is take the end and then just take like a little bit of rougher sandpaper, like 400 or maybe even 320 um, if you were getting too much slide and just roughen it up just enough that it doesn't slip around too much. I love to see a beautiful high polished tool, but sometimes with chasing and repasse, you really don't want it too shiny because then it slides around too much. Uh, this is like a 400 finish and it's actually working fine. Okay, and see, like I've got a couple tiny little gaps there. I guess I'll try to fill them in because I'm fussy. toward the top. There you go, that looks pretty good. So now I'll show you just how to use some simple daps to get some uh, nice highs and lows in this. So I have a few different size daps here and I'm just going to fool around with a bigger one and a little smaller one. I, unless I have a very specific idea in mind, usually I'm going to try a couple different sizes just for a little variety. So I'm going to keep working on the same side because usually I do one side pretty much completely before I anneal and flip it over to the other side. Maybe that's a little big. Maybe I'll switch it down to that. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that's good. Let's try that. I'm just spreading these around. I'm not really trying to do a super regular pattern. Because some of this stuff, you know, you're just going to make these decisions as you go along. You look at it and go, well, a little more of this, a little more of that. A lot like when you're forging. Um, after you've practiced a little though, if you have a very specific effect or animal or whatever it is you're making, then things will get a lot more specific. And you notice I hold the tool in my left hand, just give it a smack or two. Like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side here and then I'll probably switch over to a smaller one. Okay, so now I'm going to do smaller size and kind of mix that in. We'll see what that looks like. It 
See, because putting using multiple sizes definitely gives you a more interesting effect. Okay, so you see what I mean? I didn't really try to do it everywhere. I kind of just mixed it in. And if you look from the other side, you'll start to see what's, what all of this is gonna create. And honestly, if I look at it and I don't like it, I just keep going until I do like it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna anneal this and then I'm gonna start working from the other side. So technically what I was just doing is I was doing repasse because this is the back of the earring. When I work the other side, I'll be doing chasing, but the movements and everything else is exactly the same.